have a problem with saying I'll see you later. Because when I weigh the factors of you holding me from getting to him, you are going to lose every time. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, get out of your country from your kindred and from your father's house unto a land that I will show you. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. And in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. I believe that life at time leaves us feeling sometimes inadequate. We feel like we're equipped. We go to school. We go further our education. We, we further our skills. But sometimes, if you can be honest with yourself, you just feel inadequate. It doesn't matter how much you've accomplished in the past. Dealing with your right now sometimes just leaves you feeling really empty. And this causes me and you to question our purpose and our existence. Life, let me say this to you, life would not be what it is had not for you to be who you are. And today I want to talk about Abram when God called him out of the land of Ur. But today for context, uh, for content, I want to name it you are. God called him out of a place called you are. And I believe that you are and I are, we are in a place, I was supposed to say I are, that's how uh, special I am, I caught myself. Uh, <laughs> we are the fulfillment of someone else's dream. When I look at our community, when I look at us as a people, I believe that we are the fulfillment of another's dream. I also believe that we are the children that were promised. We are in a place that no other generation has ever been before. We have things, we experience things, we've gone places, we've, we've been allowed to do things that no other generation before us were able to do. Not only are we another person's choice, not only are we another person's promise, but we are the relief for the overwhelming pressure that others have had to face. The challenges that people have had to face in generations prior to us, we have not had to face those challenges. We can identify who we are by spending time well, we sometimes misidentify who we are by spending time, as I said earlier, trying to be something or someone that we're not. How many years did I try to be bishop so-and-so or pastor this and that? How many years did I spend time trying to identify in an outward manner, but there was no inward transformation? How many times did we try to be like Mike or how many times did we try to be like whatever superstar was put in front of us because that's what we've been fed all of our lives. Our generation is based on identifying with someone else versus identifying identifying who God created us to be. And today, I want to talk to us because God created you to be who you are. God destined you to be who you are. I believe you are the choice. I believe you are the children. I believe that you are the challenge. And I believe that you are here in this strange place called life. This is where you are, but God wants you to be where I am. For the time that is ours to share, I want to speak from the topic, you are here. Three things I want to give you, three things I want to walk with you today very quickly, and I want to help you understand why you are here. The first thing is that you must understand that this is a, in, in order to identify why you are here, you are in a choice location. It's not your choosing. It's not your, de, your defining. It is a, a place in your life that God has ordained and walked out your steps. Here in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1, it says this, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get out of your country and from your kindred, and from your father's house unto a land that I will show you. 
I can honestly say, and I'm going to kind of put this in there because I need you to identify where we are as a local body. I came from a church that my father started. I was there with family and friends and folk that I grew up with. And God, all of a sudden, 2009, January, said, get up. And I got something else for you to do. Here I am a year and a half scratching my head, looking at my wife saying, is this what God really wants me to do? Am I hearing from myself or, or do I follow what he said do? And, and I, I trusted and I believed in him and it was a hard decision, but it was a be the best decision that I could make. Why? Because obedience to God is better than relating to man. Sometimes we spend too much time trying to be relevant to men and keep the peace among men rather than being in peace and at peace with God. And I understand this, to be at peace doesn't mean everything's peaceful. I'll let that marinate for a little while. In order for you to identify what's good about the place God called you from, you need to find out what's wrong with the place he's calling you from so that you can enjoy and appreciate where he's calling you to. Abram, a man, a man who was from the land of Ur of the Chaldeans. Now, in history, we're trying to figure out where, where, where do we come from? How do all these things tie in? Are they saying that there are other civilizations that happened and existed around this time and this can't be the original? I've had these arguments. Come to the barbershop. We talk about all this kind of stuff. But Ur is where the Sumerians were, where we get our, our uh, the, the writings, the hieroglyphs, and all of those things. It, this is where Abraham came from. He had a choice. He had a choice to stay in a place of comfort and familiarity or get up and go to a place of unfamiliar surroundings. History. History says that in 1927, Leonard Woolley identified Ur Kasdim with the Sumerian city of Ur in southern Mesopotamia where the Chaldeans had settled around the 9th century. This is just a little history so we can kind of get caught up. Uh, uh, Ur lay on the boundary of the region called Chaldu or Chaldean corresponding with the Hebrew Kazdim in the first millennium. Ur was the sacred city of the moon god uh, and, and the name Camarina uh, is thought to be related to the Arabic word for the moon Kumar. It is highly probable that in the inhabitants of Ur Kazdim Abraham's ancestor, they may have been moon worshipers. Now, if we could take a picture of a moon worshiper, it kind of looks like the church. If I, can, if I can paint a picture, what happens when the moon is out? You can see the moon during the daytime, but it's more prominent in darkness. And the church, we, 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 we tend to call on God in the dark times rather than praising him for the good and the bad. Uh-huh. In Joshua 24, it is, it is based on the possibility that the name of Abraham's father, Terah, was based on the Hebrew word Y-R-H for moon. Now, I don't understand all of that. You know, like Yahweh, they didn't use vowels, uh, Y-W-H, and they had the vowels missing the same thing, same concept as here, Y-R-H. Uh, but Joshua 24 and 2 says this. You don't have to turn. He said, Joshua said to all the people, this is what the Lord God of Israel says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshiped other gods. So it is possible that God called Abraham not to just come out to be separated unto him, but because he was trained in a way of worship that was not worshiping the one true God. You are here. I am here. But is this the place God has destined us to be? Abraham had a choice to make. This is where for us the rubber has to meet the road. This is the moment that defined Abraham. We call him the father of the faith, but this is the defining moment because Abraham had to choose, am I going to worship 
what my fathers and my ancestors worship, or am I going to go after something that I can't see, I can't comprehend, taking me to a place that I'm not sure of? Am I going to believe in this God who has called me out? Abraham was called out from a place of false worship. This is where you are. This is where I am. This is where the church is. We are at a place where we're at the end of the year. This is the last Sunday in the year, and I can guarantee you that 99.999% of the messages that are going to come across the pulpit on watch night service will say something to the fact that this is your season. This is your moment. This is your time. And you're going to go through the same hell you've been going through for the last five. This is your seasons because nothing is going to change because you are where you are. But God wants you where he is. Abraham decided to venture to a place that required that he step away from what he knew or could see to totally depend on God. I believe that some of us are in the place called you are. I believe that some of us know we're supposed to move. We're supposed to make decisions. It's not just about church. It's not just about this, this, this worship thing and making the church grow. This has nothing to do. This is a personal decision that you have to make. You are in this place and God wants you from where you are to where he is, I am. When understanding you are here, understand that it is a choice location. Secondly, you must understand that there is a promising posterity. He said to, to Abram in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2, I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and I will make thy name great and, I, and thou shalt be a blessing. Now, this is what we're all going to get excited about on watch night because we want the blessing. We want the good. We shout for the greatness, but we don't like the process. We don't want to deal with what's going to have to happen in order for the greatness to come. We don't want to deal with what's going to have to happen, the pressure of that's going to face us day in and day out. I don't like where I am, but I appreciate where I am because it is the process to where God called me from to what he's calling me to. And so I learned, I learned a few years ago not to complain about my process because I know that my process comes to an end when I reach where God wants me to be and then he starts my process anew. Abraham. I believe Abraham is the example to every believer. An example highlighted with all those who identified with him in Hebrews 11 that have been, I believe the words in Hebrews 11 have been underemphasized by the limits of human understanding. So I'll read it for you and add the emphasis that I believe is necessary. In Hebrews 11, 8, and 8 through 10, it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed and he went out not knowing knowing whether he went by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob the heirs with him of the same promise for he looked for a city which had foundations whose builder and maker is God I believe most of us spend so much time going to the next great that we can't identify who is the greatest. We, we, we know who the greatest rappers are and we know who the greatest boxers are and I think Silva got beat last night again and, and so he, he lost his pedestal of greatness 
and we identify with great people, but we fail to realize that great people have greater limitations, but they overcompensate in the area that they're good so that you can't see where they're not so good. Can I get a witness? And so today I want, you to, I want you to see Abraham, his willingness to step out and trust God not only solidified him as the father of faith because he went where he did not know he was going and he trusted God to take care of him like he said he would, not knowing that provision was coming, but he did it anyway. And God said unto him, he came to him with a future promise, not for Abraham, but for future generations. He said, I will make of thee a great nation. You've got to understand what kind of faith this took because Abraham was getting up in age. According to our standard of age, he was old. You recall he was in, the, in his 90s when he had a baby, his first baby. Do you understand how hard that is? But Abraham trusted God enough to restore not only in him his youth, but restore the youth in his wife who was in her early 90s. When God took him from his own people, he promised him that he would make him the head of another people. He said, get out of your father's country understand that while the father was still alive the father was still in control understand that Abraham they left Ur and went to his brother's place his brother died and and they could not move beyond that place of familiarity and God told him from there your father's gonna die here your, your father won't see outside of this realm because he died literally when your, when your brother died. He died on the inside. And many of us have stopped in a place of death. Many of us have stopped in a place of molestation. Many of us have stopped in many different places in our lives. And God is saying, come on out, come on out. I have something for you. And here's the thing. I'm going to use the very thing that stopped you to motivate you. Half of the stuff that stopped me. Honestly, Rod, I don't want to see it anymore. Half of the stuff that entertained me or distracted me, I, I really honestly don't want to see it anymore. But I understand that those were the things that brought me to where I am. And when I acknowledge that I am here and God wants me there, I had to be willing to leave all of this, all of this stuff all of the distractions and say, God, what do you want in my life? When God took him from his own people, he made him the head of another. In Hebrews 11, 11 through 13, he says, through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive and she did, was delivered of a child when she was of past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died not having received the promise. That's faith. That's faith. You know, I, 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 I joked with us last week because I know somebody was upset that their number didn't fall. You know, but if, if, if I never exceed this tax bracket, I'm okay with that. As long as my generation and the following generations receive God, that's all that matters to me now. These all died not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed them that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth. When understanding that you are here, you understand that it is a choice location. And secondly, 
there is a promising posterity, meaning that if you get this level and measure of faith now, while you are here, that generations to come can identify with you and they too will believe in God. Third thing I want to give you and I'm going to get out of your way is a challenging response. It says, and I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curse you. And in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. I've been saying today, you are here. Abram came from a place called Ur, but today we're going to call it you are because that's where he started from. And we all have a starting point, but they all ought to be an alternate location for our ending. The message is strategically entitled, You Are Here. I titled this message because here is where most of us are. We find ourselves in the same position that Abram faced. We, we made a choice to serve God. We come to church every Sunday, so we equate that with serving God. We, we, we appreciate his promises and we give him praise because he promised to bless us. However, in this place called here, this is where you and I will face the hardest part of serving God. Not the blessing who bless us, not, not the cursing who curse us, the challenge of going opposite of everybody else when everybody else thinks that you should align with them because in their perception, their strength in numbers. Understand this. By deserting his country, Abraham lost credibility in his name. When he left his father's land, he lost credibility. Understand that Abraham came from Ur of the Chaldeans. This was a people who were strong in worship to the moon, that a whole civilization can be known for one thing. And Abraham said, Abram said, I'm following God. I'm going to leave you all. I love you, but I don't love you that much to stay here in a place that God told me to go somewhere else. So I love you, but I got to go. I did not understand. I did not understand how I understand this, but I didn't get the concept that I'm anointed in the spirit of goodbye. I don't have a problem with saying I'll see you later because when I weigh the factors of you holding me from getting to him, you are going to lose every time. Now, I, I, I've gotten strong in this place because it was one of my weakest areas. Because if you can relate, just, just help me understand this. But there was a time that I would allow you to distract me. I'm not talking about you specifically. But I would allow you to distract me from him. And I'd miss out on my relationship with him trying to keep my relationship with you. Amen. But then when I realized that you are in the same boat as me. And if there's water coming in the boat, you can't help me. And I'm going to call on him. I might as well leave you and swim to him. Somebody will catch that tomorrow. Uh, by deserting his country, he lost the credibility of his name. God said to Abram, trust me, I will make you a greater name than you ever could have had in this place called you are here. Verse three tells us that God makes Abram, makes an investment in Abram. Not only in blessing the blessers, because that's what we like. Not only in waving goodbye to your haters, because that's what somebody going to say this week. But because of Abram's willingness to step away from the familiar, he lost credibility in Abram, but God added to his name and called him Abraham. 
and because of Abraham's vulnerability to become an outcast, God rewarded him with the promise that in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed because you made a decision to trust me. I'm going to bless everybody who believes like you do. Help me understand this because now we're living in a day and age, and I'm going to get in trouble for watching that. I'm going to tell you now. We're living in a day and age where there is no sacredness. We're living in a day and age where the church is the hip hop community. We're living in a day and age where there's no line of demarcation between sin and sanctity. And, and, and I'm, 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 I'm at a place where I'd rather live a boring life sitting in a corner, reading the word of God for hours on end, studying to make sure that at least one person understand who he is. Go home, sit in another corner and say, I've, I've, I've at least been obedient to what you called me to. Versus trying to run all the secret corners and being in this clique and hanging with this group and being big wiggish with these folk. I'd rather be here understanding where God wants me to be Amen. and understanding that he's preparing for me to go to a different place. I'd rather be in preparation while I'm here. I'd rather be strengthened while I'm here than to keep feeding weak people who take from you and never give anything back. Amen. You are here, but God is calling you there. Your there is my there. Your, your there is somewhere totally different. So much so that, that while they were away, you said, I'm going to give my life to him. Your, your there is totally different for each person. But in order for you to find there, you got to get up out of here. And as I close this message, I can preach to you all day. I got two more hours worth of stuff to give you. But I will say this to you. What happens next is totally up to you. You can stay here. You can stay familiar. You can stay comfortable. You can stay well known. Or you can be hated among men. You can be loved by God. You can be under his protection. You can be comforted by him. You can be under his wing. And he take care of everything that you have. You can be here or you can get up go and go there. But the choice is totally up to you. Father, I bless you. I magnify you for transforming the words, the message, but more importantly, God, our lives. Taking us from here this place of comfort to a place that we are unsure of, but in you we trust, in you we move, in you we have our being. As we make the decision to move, understand that it is a choice location. We understand the promise of posterity, but more importantly, we, we understand that we accept the challenge and we respond with a yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. We magnify you. It is in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm.